Hello, big team. Hello, friends. Welcome to Lizzie Fay Loves Books. I'm Elizabeth, and I'm here today with my daughter, Emmeline, because we want to share with you what we read in the month of May for her hashtag book a day in May project. So if you haven't met Emily before, she is 21 years old. She has autism and epilepsy and is currently nonverbal, but loves to look at books. And we have quite a collection of Dr. Seuss books ourselves, but we read most of those last year. And because in my research, I discovered that Dr. Seuss not only wrote and illustrated 44 books for children and that were published in his lifetime, there have been several more that have been published since his death and a whole series of books that were published under a pseudonym and just a lot of other books that are um, that have been inspired by Dr. Seuss. So I want to share with you what we read. Now, Emily's not going to be able to stand through this whole video, but I did lay out the books in some different groups and I asked her to choose her favorites. So I want to show you those quickly and then I'm going to let her sit down and I'll finish up the video. If you missed our video last year that we did uh, for our first part of this project, I did show a short clip of Emily at age six and then again at age seven at her birthday when she was very talkative and um, I think it was her sixth birthday that she had a cat in the hat birthday and I, I shared that clip. So I'll leave a link for that uh, here and you can check that out if you want to see uh, what, a, what a personality she had when she was younger. But she did pick out her favorites. So of the books that we read this year that were illustrated, written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss, she picked the, the Bipolo Seed and Other Lost Stories. And you're going to have to hold it up where people can see it, though. Well, why don't we hold it in between us like that? Uh, this has several stories that were published, I believe, in various publications I knew she wasn't going to last very long. Uh, this was written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss, but it was edited and put together in book form after his death because these are stories that were all published in periodicals during Dr. Seuss's lifetime. So there is a wonderful forward in the book, an introduction that gives in detail what was involved in finding these stories and, and putting this together. I did read this whole introduction to Emily. It was very interesting, and uh, the stories were very cute. One of the things that I learned in this that I thought was interesting, because the story in here, Gustav the Goldfish, seemed very familiar, and it's because it was actually originally written by his wife, Helen Palmer, and published under her name, and it was called A Fish Out of Water. We happen to have it in this bind up. It's called The Big Purple Book of Beginner Books, and none of these books were written uh, or illustrated by Dr. Seuss, but the original story, Dust of the Goldfish, was the inspiration for the... Um, the story that's in the Bipolo Seed. So let me find it here. A Fish Out of Water by Helen Palmer, illustrated by P.D. Eastman. And then in the Bipolo Seed and other lost stories, it is called Gustav the Goldfish. And it is illustrated by Dr. Seuss, but it is a very similar story. So let me show you here and um, just changed enough so that it's different. And, you know, they were husband and wife, so I'm sure permissions were made and, and all of that. But uh, anyway, very uh, interesting. So let me show you, now before I get her back up here, I'll show you the other books that we read that were written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss under the Dr. Seuss name. Now, we did have two rereads that we had read last year. Uh, one of them, because Emily's birthday is in May, is Happy Birthday to You. So we read that again on her birthday, in addition to another one that same day that was new to us. And then we also read Daisy Head Maisie. I honestly didn't remember that we had read this when I checked it out from the library, but we have this on video and Emily enjoys watching it and I knew she enjoyed the story. So we went ahead and just read it again. And then I realized later that we did read it last year, but it's fine. It's a cute story and Emily enjoys it. So then 
surprisingly, last year we did not read the Lorax. We had read it before. We don't own a copy, and I just neglected to check it out last year, or we would have probably read it. She does have the video of this, but uh, we did not read it as part of our project last year. This is one of my favorites. Uh, I really just enjoy the environmental aspect of it. One that I had read to both the girls in the past that I never really cared for is the Butter Battle Book. And the reason I don't care for it is because it really is an illustration about the fruitlessness of war. And it really is just that. It, it is what it is. And it's not a pretty picture. It is sad that war is a part of life and it goes on when there really are no winners. So um, it's, it's a good illustration of that, but uh, it's not a favorite. Then I didn't realize when we started this project last year that there's actually a third Horton book. This is Horton and the Quagger Bug and more lost stories. So the Quagger Bug takes advantage of Horton much like the uh, bird, is her name Maisie, in Horton Hatches the Egg. And, you know, Horton is just, um, he's a good, he has a good heart and lets people take advantage of him. So if nothing else, we could learn from Horton to, um, you know, it, it's good to be good, but at the same time, don't let yourself get run over. Uh, then another one we read, I Can Lick 30 Tigers Today by Dr. Seuss. This is sort of an illustration to remind us not to brag. <laughs> and we also read another little book called The Big Brag. And again, a very good illustration of two animals who just brag and brag. And finally, <laughs> someone else comes along to sort of put them in their place. I knew that this sounded familiar, and I realized later through some other reading that it actually is part of uh, Yertle the Turtle and other stories. This is our book. We did not reread this whole book this year, but I did just look in here and verify, yes, the big brag is uh, one of the stories in Yertle the Turtle. So if you've read Yertle the Turtle, then you've read the big brag more than likely. And uh, those are all of the larger ones. Uh, then I think I have a few other beginner books that were written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss. So let me grab those. The very first book of the month was one that is our own book, Hop on Pop. We just never got around to reading this one during the month of May last year. So we started out with this one. And then the rest of these, I think, are library books. We had read this one before, um, not during our project, but just at some point in the past. I can read with my eyes shut. This is cute. And you're like, what? You can read with your eyes shut, but you have to read it. Then you get it. Uh, this one, Oh, the Thinks You Can Think. It's very cute. And then, Oh, Say Can You Say. And this one... Marvin K. Mooney, will you please go now? Poor Marvin. <laughs> um, not everyone in every Dr. Seuss book gets treated fairly, I will say. Horton is a good example of that. I'm trying to think now what it is about Marvin. We don't really know. I think that this is really just an exercise in recognizing the word go, maybe. Um, anyway, so I won't spoil the ending in case you haven't read that one. And then this one is kind of neat. The Shape of Me and Other Stuff. It features silhouettes and recognizing the shapes of things. So that is pretty neat. And I think that is all that we read. Now, those are, I think, the rest of the original 44 books written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss that we did not read last year, with one exception. There's one about drawing that, um, you know, it's really not conducive to being a library book, so our library doesn't have it, because I'm assuming that it's one that you are to actually draw in, and I didn't think about ordering it or anything. I just um, 
you know, I figured we could just pass on that one. And then another one we didn't read in its entirety last year. We did check it out, and that is the Cat in the Hat songbook. At some point, I'd like to get that and maybe take it up to church when there's no service going on so that we can play through it on the piano. We used to have a piano, but we gave it away because no one was playing it. It was just taking up space, and so um, I can play the piano. I just don't very often. Anyway, other than that, I think now we have read all of the original children's books that were written and illustrated by Dr. Seuss under the Dr. Seuss name. So now let's talk about the books that Dr. Seuss wrote under the name Theo Lesieg. Lesieg is Geisel spelled backwards. So let me get Emily back up here to show you her favorite, which actually happens to be my favorite as well. Okay, so next we're going to show you the group of books that were originally published under the name Theo Lesieg. And the one that Emily chose as, as her favorite is one that is actually one of my favorites too, Ten Apples Up on Top. This was just a really fun counting book. I loved how it was illustrated. The illustrations are by Roy McKee, and uh, it was just a really fun uh, uh, book about counting, and I thoroughly enjoyed it. I didn't know that we were going to be able to get the whole version, because when I originally searched for it, all I came up with on our library website is the board book version. I didn't realize that the full-length versions were not cataloged under the name Dr. Seuss. They were cataloged under the name Theo Lesieg. So when I actually searched that name later in the month and came up with this other stack of books I'm going to show you, I realized they did, in fact, have the full-length version. So I'm going to let her sit down, and I'm going to show you the rest of the books published under the name Theo Lesieg. So I realized that all of the books written under the pseudonym Theo Lesieg are illustrated by other people. And so I'll try to remember to tell you who the illustrators are as I go along. So we did not read these in this order. This is just how I picked them up. So I want to go through these. Uh, I wish that I had Duck Feet is illustrated by B. Toby. It was cute. In a People House, illustrated by Roy McKee, was very fun. It was a mouse giving a bird a tour of a people house. It was fun. Uh, the Tooth Book is, of course, a book about teeth. It is illustrated by Joe Matthew, I think is how you say that. It's not the traditional spelling of Matthew, but I can't figure out in any other way that it would be. This was one of my favorites. Please try to remember the 1st of October. This is illustrated by Art Cummings, and this is just a fun look at the months, including a fictitious one. This is a fun book about occupations and careers. Maybe you should fly a jet. Maybe you should be a vet. Illustrated by Michael J. Smolin. Or Smolin. Not sure. Would you rather be a bullfrog? Illustrated by Roy McKee. And the eye book, illustrated by Joe Matthew. Again, a book about eyes, teeth, eyes. I think last year we read the the nose book. Is there is there one called the nose book? I don't know. They're, they're fun. Uh, this one was tough. I kept having to stop and explain that this is not good behavior. And that's really what this book is good for. Uh, and I'll, I'll explain in a minute. Hooper Humperdinck, not him, illustrated by Charles E. Martin. So this is a story of, I guess, a child who is planning a big party and wants to invite everyone under the sun except for Hooper Humperdinck. And as you go along reading this, it is a really good illustration of how you don't want to be. You don't want to be that person who is mean and rude and excludes someone. And I think if you are in that situation as a parent, you've got a child who's planning a party and they're like, no, I'm not inviting him. And that's like the only person they don't want to invite. Um, I mean, there could be reasons, you know, but this is a really good illustration of, you know, why that really is not the best behavior to exclude someone. So anyway, it all comes out well in the end, but you know, uh, this is a book that was originally published under the name Theola Sieg that we did not read because I didn't pick it up till yesterday. And so we haven't read this one yet, but perhaps we'll read it today because we're filming this on Wednesday and this is called Wacky Wednesday. And if there are any other books published under the name Theola Sieg, I don't know about them. But this is all that we could get from our library, and uh, I just really enjoyed them. They were very good. 
Okay, our next group of books are books that were published under the name Dr. Seuss, but were illustrated by other people. And I think some of these were published after Dr. Seuss's death. Some of them he might have done collabs with during his lifetime. I am not sure, but we are just grouping all of these into that category. And Emily's favorite book from this category is A Great Day for Up. And I enjoyed this one too. I'm guessing that she may have chosen this one because it really... Uh, as far as illustrations go, it is the most Seussian of them, and uh, I I think that's probably why she picked it. Okay, all right, so this is going to be the other books that were published under the name Dr. Seuss that were illustrated by other people. We read I Am Not Going to Get Up Today, illustrated by James Stevenson. This was really cute, and I have to say, it didn't end exactly like I thought it was going to, and I won't spoil the ending if you haven't read it. Uh, this one was cute. I believe this is one of those that was put together after Dr. Seuss's death, and it was um, finished up by Jack Prolutsky and Lane Smith. It is Hooray for Diffendoofer Day, and it was... Um, the, it's explained in the introduction. They found the beginnings of a story and the ideas and then these two people took that and uh and finished it up so uh i did really enjoy that and i think emily did as well uh this one was illustrated by someone else but it was based on a film that dr seuss did back in the late 40s or maybe 1950, and it was an Academy Award-winning motion picture called Gerald McBoing Boing. And the book is really cute, and <laughs> old school me <laughs> read it, and I'm thinking, wow, I wish there was a way we could see that. I wonder if the library would have that on DVD or something. Hello, it's on YouTube, of course. <laughs> I think I like woke up in the middle of the night <laughs> one night and was like, I bet it's on YouTube, <laughs> and it is. You can watch it on YouTube. It's really cute. And I think I probably did see it when I was younger. So then this one, I think, was also one of those things that was put together after Dr. Seuss's death. There was, uh, Bits of it were written, and so it was finished up by Andrew Joyner, and this is Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum. This is very interesting. I had never heard of this before. And it is basically a, a book about art using horses as the, I don't want to say medium, but the venue, sort of. And um, I thought it was very good. It uses actual art that includes horses and um, explains about all the different types of art. And apparently that was a project that Dr. Seuss wanted to do, and it was put together after his death. This is uh, called My Many Colored Days. Um, this is illustrated with paintings by Steve Johnson and Lou Fancher, and it is just a colorful look at our moods and how Colors can illustrate emotions, and it was very quick and very enjoyable. And then I have one other book that just came in from the library. This is one we have not read. It's called Come Over to My House by Dr. Seuss. It is illustrated by Katie Kath, and we will have to read this this week, but um, we haven't yet because I just picked it up yesterday. I guess we could have gotten it read before the video, but I didn't think about it till we were already filming. This is another little book that we enjoyed that is a compilation of quotes from various Dr. Seuss books. It's called Seussisms, Wise and Witty Prescriptions for Living from the Good Doctor. And it's just a little book of quotes, and it uses some of the illustrations from the various Dr. Seuss books. It's just a cute little gift book, and uh, we enjoyed that. I already showed you the board book of Ten Apples Up on Top. We also read one of the board books in the Thing 1 and Thing 2 series. This one's called Summer Things. I think there's one for each season, and this is the only one that we could get a hold of for the month of May. But Emily did really enjoy this one. She would come back to this and continue to look at it. And it is just basically a, a little board book showing thing one and thing two with some summer things. 
And then I have two books here that we own that are not written by Dr. Seuss, but they are inspired by him. One of them is based on The Wubbles World of Dr. Seuss. Both of them are by Tish, I don't know if it's Rabe or Rabe, R-A-B-E. And this one I picked up at a library sale. I think I got it free. It's it's all scribbled up, but it's called Who Are You, Sue Snoo? And actually, I may have paid a quarter for it, but anyway, uh, we had read this before, and we enjoyed it again because we wanted to read it for our project. Yeah, it is it is all marked up. I think this one had come from a library sale back when I was in charge of library sales, and nobody bought it, and so we may have put in a donation for it, although... A lot of people would have just thrown it out because it is all marked up and it doesn't have a spine. But it's still readable, so we read it. This is also our book, and this probably came from a library sale, too. This is called There's a Map on My Lap. It's all about maps. It is by the same author, and it is illustrated by Aristides Ruiz. I hope I'm saying that right. Anyway, this is a book about maps and reading maps and geography and all that, so that's great. Okay, so let's finish up the video with four adult books. I did read and look through these with Emily, and uh, I didn't make her pick a favorite, but I'm going to show them to you. We read You're Only Old Once by Dr. Seuss. This is a book for obsolete children. This is really for all ages. I think it would definitely most be enjoyed by someone who is, say, 50 and older. It is, it is a very cute Dr. Seuss look at growing older and aging and, and all that's involved in that. And one of his very earliest books, I mentioned as kind of a teaser in my other video, this is Dr. Seuss's The Seven Lady Godivas. Now, I mentioned that this is not nearly as scandalous as you might think. Now, it is a book for adults, but Emily is 21, so I read this with her, and it's actually very cute. It's written as the origin story of some proverbial bits of wisdom and cliches that have been handed down for generations. And it does have something to do with horses. And the love interests of the Lady Godivas are the Peeping family. And they are not actual peepers. That is just their last name. And we have Peeping Tom, Peeping Dick, Peeping Harry, and it goes on from there. There's seven of them. And it's just a very cute book. We really uh, enjoyed it. And I'm so glad that our library had it. Um, you know, it, check and see if your library has it. It really is not any more scandalous than uh, this right here. I mean, it's it's fine, <laughs> honestly. Um, I, I just thought it was very cute, and I'm I'm really glad that we read it. So then we have a couple of art books. The Secret Art of Dr. Seuss is really just uh, what it says. It is art with some captions. And then a lot of what's in this book is also in this book, The Cat Behind the Hat, but this has a lot more text. I did take several days and read all of the text, but I turned through the entire book with Emily and looked at all the pictures, read some of the captions with her, but in order for her to say she had read a Dr. Seuss book every day, on that same day that she looked at this, we also read this one. So this was <laughs> the, the two extremes, the shortest and the longest. And so then I took the next several days after that and actually read it. I found it very interesting. It's, it's pretty thick. I mean, I would consider this a coffee table book, uh, but I really enjoyed it. And I learned a lot about Dr. Seuss. In fact, if I was in college and I needed to write a paper on a children's author, I think I've probably got enough source material here to write a pretty decent paper. We did check one out that I chose not to read with Emily, and I started, but I did not finish. I'm not considering it a complete DNF because I never actually put it on my currently reading list. I did, uh, I think I did put it on my want to read, and so I might come back to it at some point. This is called The Tough Coughs As He Plows the Dough. And these are early writings and cartoons of Dr. Seuss. I believe these were all uh, things that were originally published in the 20s and 30s. And some of them were the very early writings and cartoons of Dr. Seuss when he was at Dartmouth College. And the 
part of the reason I didn't finish it and it wasn't a quick read is that it's laid out kind of like a newspaper in columns. And I just found that to be cumbersome to read. I mean, I don't know that there's a better way they could have done it, but I just had a hard time with it. Now I got this far uh, and then I just thought, I don't have time to read this. We were running out of month. You know, had I picked it up at the beginning of the month and realized what it was, I would have maybe read a few pages every day all throughout the month. But it's the kind of book that it doesn't flow from one thing to another as quickly as some things might. And I just didn't have the patience for it. <laughs> but it is, uh, it does look quite interesting. And if you were doing a full study of Dr. Seuss, which you know, you could get more, way more into it than we did, uh, then you would definitely want to study these early drawings and writings. There are some essays here that he wrote, I think, either while he was in college or or not long after. So anyway, uh, it's, it's just the very early writings of Dr. Seuss, and um, I wanted to at least show it to you and let you know that we did start it, but... Um, or I started it, but I, I didn't get very far. And there are, of course, lots of biographies that have been written about Dr. Seuss. And uh, I feel like we've had a deep enough dive <laughs> for a couple of years. I may go back and revisit, um, you know, something like this or some of the other biographical books at a later time. But but for now, I think we have had enough uh, Seuss, Seussism for, uh, for the year. So, uh, before we go, Emily wants to show you the other books that we read that are not Dr. Seuss. We actually purchased this one during the month of May, and she has looked at it over and over and over again. We did read it. Uh, it is a Veggie Tales book. It is a vegetational book about letters, Bob and Larry's ABCs, and she really enjoyed it. We also had another book on our shelves that we ended up reading later in the month as well. Uh, Good Night Duke. This is by Ronald Kidd. And I want to say thanks to Storm for helping to fix the listing on Goodreads. It was all messed up and not connected with the rest of the series because we did check out two from the series from the library. So um, she already had these checked out before May and we hadn't gotten around to reading them. So I decided just to go ahead and read these in May. You know, we're already reading all these other things. Why not just go ahead and, and read the VeggieTales books as well? Uh, the Good, the Bad, and the Silly by Doug Peterson was very cute. And the uh, the Giant Thank You, uh, also by Doug Peterson, it was very cute. This series is called Values to Grow By, and there are uh, several authors who have written and contributed to that series. But I think of the VeggieTales books, this one is Emily's favorite. And then one other book which I did show in my other regular may wrap up is when turtle grew feathers this is by tim tingle and it is a choctaw folk tale it's basically the choctaw version of the tortoise and the hare that is everything that i read with emily uh except for one nonfiction devotional book that was geared towards families and i did show that in my may wrap up as well but we had a big reading month and we really enjoyed what we read and now we've got to get these books back to the library so, so tell everybody bye Thanks for stopping by. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day. Read a good book and God bless you. So tell everybody bye, Emily. And thank you for stopping by. Thank oh my goodness. Let's do that again. And this time don't poke me in the eye. Okay.